Now, for thousands of blind and visually impaired people, guide dogs are the difference between independence and isolation. But there's a shortage in the UK. The National Centre for Guide Dogs for the Blind Association is based at Leamington Spa. BBC correspondent Sean Dilley, who's used a number of guide dogs over the past 23 years, is now facing a two-year wait after his last guide dog, Sammy, retired. He's investigated the issue for a new documentary, which is now available on the iPlayer. During the pandemic, the breeding and training programme of guide dogs shut down for five months. That meant overnight there was a massive issue where there physically weren't enough dogs. And then the other issue that you had is even people who were volunteers who raised puppies, you had a, an instant problem that they couldn't be socialised and trained in crowds like that behind me. There weren't busy people about uh, to, to get those dogs conditioned and used to that. So that was a really big problem. And because they couldn't do face-to-face -face social distancing laws and so on that were in place at the time, you ended up with this really peculiar situation where essentially the amount of people qualifying uh, in that year it didn't go down to zero, but for five months uh, they were both paused. And so at the moment they've been looking to replenish a third of their puppy raising volunteers that disappeared. Following the BBC's coverage, I can tell you uh, that they've, more, they've got more than that number of applications with 1,100 dogs currently with puppy raisers. So I'd say that it's a very feel-good film, but by the same token, you might need some Phoenix on hand for the last bit of it. Gosh, they're special animals, aren't they? So what does it take to be a foster carer for guide dog puppies? Well, Audrey Diaz is in Warwick tonight to find out. Audrey. Nick, they do such an important job, don't they, guide dogs? I am experiencing acuteness overload here and getting quite distracted. So before I do, this is Hugo, 16-month-old guide dog in training. And, of course, Harriet, uh, I haven't forgotten you. Uh, Harriet, you foster uh, guide dogs like Hugo. Um, can you just tell me what it involves? Um, so, basically, fostering a guide dog in training is all about giving the dog a loving fun home for about 16 weeks um, while they attend the training school. Yeah, they are on quite a strict schedule, aren't they? Yeah, so I take Hugo to school in the morning, a bit like the doggy school run, um, and then I pick him up in the evening, and during the evenings, he's generally quite tired after his day, but he'll have a bit of a play, he'll relax and chill out, a bit like he's doing now, eating his bone, and then have his dinner, have a nap, and then repeat. And then at the weekends, he gets to be a dog. And we, we go out on adventures, and he gets to sniff and go in the mud and play, and that's basically what it involves. Well, you form <laughs> such a strong bond with these dogs. It must be hard to give them up. Yes, I, I get really attached to them, um, but we take on these amazing dogs knowing that they're not going to be with us forever. They're going to go on to change somebody's life and give them that independence. Um, so although we miss every single dog that we've had. Right. And what advice would you give others who want to take on fostering? I think I'd say definitely go for it. It's really, really rewarding. Um, you learn so much about dog care, dog behaviour and, and dog training. and. Just being out and about with a dog is so good for you. Well, thank you so much, Harriet. And before I get even more distracted, as Harriet said there, it is a really rewarding job to do. And you can watch the rest of Sean's documentary on the iPlayer. Oh, Audrey, thanks very much indeed. So, 